Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode here on Eat Sleep Brief. And this week I'm going to be covering a topic I've done before. It's going to be on green hair allergies. I have a buddy that has, it's about a 100, 120 gallon uh, aquarium. It's pretty much about two corals in there, mainly fish. Uh, but he's been dealing with algae issues, specifically green hair algae. You guys can see here from the video, it, this thing is beyond saturated with green hair algae all over the rocks. You know, you almost can't even see the rock in a lot of places. The green hair algae in some areas being, you know, a solid two, three, four inches long. So I'm sure we can say this is going to be an extreme case of green hair algae. So I really wanted to use this tank and uh, show you guys, you know, something I think we've all heard about, uh, but more importantly, the benefits and how good and effective a refugium can be. If you guys are aware, or maybe aren't aware, I've always seen old time reefers, uh, reefers that have been doing reefing, you know, since the uh, 80s, 90s, um, early 2000s. A lot of those people swear by refugiums. A lot of them will tell you you can't even maintain a tank successfully without a refugium. Um, I've also noticed on Instagram, YouTube, internet, a lot of the tanks that we all admire, specifically the big tanks, the tanks have been running for 5, uh, 10, 15 years, almost all of them I see have refugiums. So there has to be some sort of correlation, right? So you guys are probably saying, so what really are the benefits of having a refugium? Well, two of the very important things is obviously they consume nutrients. So nutrients being nitrates, phosphates, they also consume other stuff and uh, release other good nutrients into the water. But yeah, specifically nitrates and phosphates, they're very good at, I wouldn't say completely eliminating them, but putting them in a place where Essentially, corals and fish like to be kept at as far as nitrates and phosphates. Another benefit to a refugium is that the refugium itself bugs all the critters it grows in there. They actually feed the corals, uh, they feed the fish, obviously, you know, the pods that are coming out of it. Uh, it's just really a whole ecosystem uh, that's really self sustainable, if you will. Um, so not only is it able to maintain nutri uh, sorry, nutrients by nitrates and phosphates, it's also able to uh, feed your aquarium, feed your corals, feed your fish. And it's really just a regenerative ecosystem that goes on and on and on. So you're probably saying, how are the nutrients exported? Well, not to get too scientific about it, but algae uses light. Right. So aside from light, it also needs nutrients. If you're able to provide light and excess nutrients, you will have a thriving uh, algae. So the benefits of having a refugium is you're able to focus and concentrate this algae to obviously grow in one location. As far as the exporting goes, it's very simple. You're essentially exporting the nutrients when you grab that ball of chato um, or whatever mackerel you have and you toss it out of the tank. That's essentially how you're exporting the nutrients. So a good idea when you do have a refugium is to have different types of macro algaes. And the reason for this is because not all macro algaes grow at the same rate. Uh, not all of them thrive in the same environments. I've heard a lot of people say, you know, they can't keep color on their reef tank. I've heard people say they can't keep chato on their reef tank. You know, not every reef tank is the same, whether it's elements, just certain parameters in the water don't like certain kinds of algae, just like corals. And for this, I recommend people to maintain different macro algae and try and stick to the one that obviously does very well in your tank. What I went ahead and did with this tank, I pretty much converted the whole first chamber, as you can see, uh, into refugia. It's kind of like the Triton method. The Triton method, the way it works, the whole uh, first chamber becomes where you have your macro algae. Typically, is where you would have your skimmer. Uh, but per Triton method, this is where uh, the macro algae is going to grow. Another side of the Triton method is it doesn't use any mechanical filtration. So the big biomass of the uh, macro algae is actually the one that, can, that consumes all the food, the poo, I mean everything. It's pretty much like a big compost it is really the way it works. I thought, why not do a test and really see how effective... A refugium can be even in an extreme case of green hair algae as you can witness here. So I went ahead and I started this test about three weeks ago. 
I started with a small ball of Chato, really was it maybe fist size, and obviously this tank had excess nutrients, uh, but it was just ridiculous to see the amount of growth on this Chato that essentially had come up, as you can see uh, right now. Within three weeks, this stuff had grown like, like crazy. One thing I, I did notice in the main display, a lot of you guys would assume that it should start dying off. Well, not always. What I did notice, though, is that the main tank, obviously when I'm doing the water changes, I'm able to siphon this stuff out. Like It literally just comes right off the rock. So what this is telling me is that Chato has effectively outcompeted not fully, but I'll compete to a certain extent the green hair algae. And you're probably saying, how do you know this? Well, the way I know this is the green hair algae is no longer, uh, or doesn't any longer have a good foothold in the rock. As you can see, it's just being swept up here uh, by the siphon. I mean, this stuff is really, really nasty. Uh, you can see it here in the bucket. Uh, but it's very cool to see how the Chato has begun to outcompete it. The way I feel I'm gonna win this war, I'm gonna probably increase the time that the light's on for, just to guarantee that the Chato is grabbing as much of the nutrients out of the water column. So you guys out there are probably saying, I've seen tons of reefers you know, have successful tanks and they don't have refugiums, how are they doing that? Well, it really breaks down to exporting the nutrients you have in the tank, specifically nitrates and phosphates. For nitrates, you can do vodka dosing, you can do nopox, you can do uh, bio pellets. I mean, there's so many things you can do uh, to supplement or add, add a chemical uh, to take out the nitrates, or there's also biomedia. And second is uh, phosphates, right? So how, you're probably saying, how do people take out phosphates? Well, phosphates is a little bit easier, um, and you can typically do it with GFO. Although vodka dosing and nopox will take out some phosphates, it, it's a lot better at nitrates than it is at, uh, at phosphates. So generally what people will do, they'll run GFO. Also in scenarios like this, there's also people that have refugiums and still run a small amount of GFO. And you're probably saying, why? Because remember how I mentioned earlier, there's certain macroalgaes will consume nitrates and phosphates in different ratios. Well, in most cases, macroalgae will consume nitrate a lot quicker than it will phosphate. Luckily in this tank, I'm actually, I did a water test uh, right after the water change, um, and we have a pretty good balance. Nitrates are about 20, they've come down to 20, they were a lot higher, and phosphates are 0.06, which is not bad. Obviously, I'd want them closer to 0.03, but we're getting a lot closer. My recommendation, you're probably saying, so what's the takeaway from this video? What you know? What can I take and apply to my tank? Well, if there ever is a time for you guys to be able to run a refugium, the benefits are endless. I mean, there's so many benefits. More importantly, they're, as you can see, they're very effective at exporting nutrients. You know, one of the bad things with dosing to eliminate nitrates and phosphates, it's Again, it's a manual thing, or if, even if it's not manual, it's on a doser, and it's always fluctuating. Whereas, if you do it with a refugium, it's a lot more consistent, it's self-sustaining, you're a lot more able to reproduce it and to continue it. More importantly, it's able to sustain itself. That's my recommendation, guys. You know, if you are able to run a refugium, I know a lot of us aren't. Um, the second best thing to refugium, and what I'd really recommend, is an algae scrubber. Algae scrubbers are known to be, again, very effective at exporting nutrients, both nitrates and phosphates. But then again, I feel if you can run a refugium, there's just so many benefits beyond the exporting nutrients. They export certain metals, uh, they replenish certain elements back into the reef tank as well, and they feed the coral and fish. So again, there's so many benefits I see to refugium. If you are able to run it, great. If not, you can get away with an algae scrubber. This is not saying that you won't have any success without a refugium. You absolutely can. All I'm trying to say here, and more importantly, is just show you what a good refugium is able to do in a reef tank. It absolutely wreaked havoc on that hair algae. Now, given, yes, I understand all the green hair algae isn't gone, but I will say we're a lot better than we were when we started. So guys, I'm gonna leave this video here. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. I thought I'd share this with you, maybe to give you another option to combat some algae issues, 
more importantly, a more natural way to do so. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please leave them down in the comment box below. More importantly, leave me a comment down below letting me know what you do to maintain your nitrates and phosphates. Also, let me know what you think about refugiums. I'd love to hear it. I love chatting with you guys again. Thank you very much for watching. As always, happy reefing.